Holy crap. That's disgusting. You see all the crap on there? That's what I'm saying. That idle jet's completely blocked with grime. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're doing some motorcycle repairs. It's the season. Uh, customer brought his... 1986 Kawasaki Vulcan 750 over. It's been sitting for a few years. Uh, it's water cooled, so it has some kind of coolant leak. And the carburetors are all gummed up. And basically, he wants it back on the road. So, today we're going to clean some carburetors. So, here they are. Got them off the bike. And this thing, it wasn't that easy. They're stuffed in between the, you know, it's a V twin. So they're kind of like at a weird angle. So we're going to tear these guys apart and I'll show you what my process is to thoroughly clean and inspect the carburetors to ensure that drivability is, you know, as good as new. Motorcycle carburetors are significantly more complicated than your lawnmower and what typically happens is the ethanol, you know, in the bowl just gums up the the flow and the little idle passages and just kind of you got to tear it all apart and clean everything you, you don't necessarily need a rebuild kit uh, maybe except for the gaskets but usually you can get away with just tearing it apart and cleaning it so the tools that we'll, we're going to need very simple WD-40 some uh, little air in the bottle because you can find you know just give it a little puff instead of a, a big 150 PSI. And then a selection of picks and a little pin here for the very fine jets. And then obviously screwdriver to tear this thing apart. Now theory and operation here. It's very important to understand how the carburetor works so you can clean it properly. You have to check each circuit. So several fuel circuits here. There's the choke circuit, then there's the idle circuit, and each circuit has fuel and air jets to atomize the fuel before it gets sucked into the venturi here. So choke, idle, and then your main, you know, mid range and full throttle. So these are constant velocity type carburetors. There's a little vacuum chamber here, and when you know, the air velocity through the venturi is high, this float lifts up and you see there's a needle going into the needle jet down there and the main jet is below that. In a wide open throttle, the main jet actually controls the amount of fuel that gets sucked into the venturi. Again, each circuit has fuel and air. Jets that we need to check and clean and also the fuel feed from the petcock to the bowls these lines right here there's one there's two and then also the vent lines that, that are important you can see that there's a vent hose going to our chambers so get this torn apart if you're looking for good reference material on how carburetors work I recommend the Chilton's motorcycle and ATV repair manual from 1985 this book has some fantastic information on it uh, and also covers specific models from 45 to 85. Japanese bikes, Harleys, even Italian bikes. So get that if you can find it on eBay. Alright, first thing we want to do is get all these hoses off. Now it's getting new fuel lines and inline filters so we won't be needing these guys, so one fuel hose, actually this is the second one, pop that off, and then this guy is a vacuum line that goes to uh, the petcock which is vacuum operated. So pop that guy off too, and also the vent lines will pop off from the top. One, you can 
already smell the ethanol gas <laughs> in the bowls there. All right, so the hoses are off. So this sits in the motorcycle like this if that's forward. So let's start with the right carburetor. And in this case, we are going to have to separate them because I think the floats, it's like a side, you know, the chamber is right here. So if we unscrew these three, the carburetor should come off. If we take off the linkage for the throttle and the choke circuit. So let's do that. Keep track of all your washers and little bits and pieces here. So that guy can stay. I guess we can remove actual pieces. There's a bushing, a plastic thing. Or you can put a little nut on here to keep everything together so you don't have to figure out how to put it back. So now I want to unhook this throttle arm off and you just have to bend this little clip back. This is kind of a zen process. Sometimes little tweezers help. There we go. And for the parts, we'll just put them all in order on our blue paper towel. So that throttle linkage is now free and we can, I think, separate this carburetor. So it's three bolts on the back side. Okay. And we got a mess leaking out. I'm going to dump this and obviously clean this up. <laughs> Alright, let's start with the float bowl. <clears throat> so, to get this holder out, you just kind of use a pick as a lever. And the pin should come out. And the float, be careful, it's attached to the needle. You can take the whole assembly out. There we go. So we see all kinds of nasty green ethanol deposits on there. Good thing to have is a Q-tip. So take your WD-40, spray it into the fuel intake. There you go. And just go to town with Q-tip and get that seat nice and clean. See how much junk is coming out of there. Now you might ask, why am I not using carb clean? It's just too aggressive and you can like sprain your eyes and it smells really strong. There's no need for it. You know, WD-40 is a nice forgivable, forgiving solvent. And it lubricates everything nicely too. So you can soak the whole carburetor in WD-40 and nothing bad will happen. <laughs> Alright, so that's clean. I like that. Now we'll take our needle. Wipe the seat. A little rubber tip. And then, you also want to make sure that there's a little spring-loaded tip there and that should be easy to depress. Now when I first took it off it was kind of stuck and now it's it's moving again. 
So again, just give it a little, little rinse. Very nice. So we'll put that aside. Our float's good and our needle and also the seat. Here's the chamber. Now, make sure the vent line coming up here isn't clogged. So you can always blow through with the duster. That's nice and clean. And any other passages? No, I think that's it. So, pretty easy. This is done. So we can set this aside you know, for the right carburetor and actually get to the meat and potatoes which is this guy. So let's start from the top. Tear off this cap. This is going to be our vacuum chamber up top. and our float. So there's the little return spring. And again, nothing to clog up here really, so you don't have to tear that all the way off. But you want to make sure the needle itself doesn't have any varnish deposits on it. Wipe that off. And there's only one way this can go in. Make sure you know which way you took it off. There's a little port right there. That's actually how this chamber is put under vacuum. And you can also see that there's a port right here. All right? So vacuum up here, pulls the flow up, you get more gas. Pretty easy. Next thing, let's pop off this side piece. Now this, I think it's called like a anti-backfire valve basically lets a little more gas in when you're decel and prevents backfires so not the most critical piece but still it's part of the whole system you want to make sure it, everything moves you can see there's a little plunger in there and also watch out for this o-ring It goes right there. So we'll put this aside. And also the spring. Now, last thing we can remove is this bottom cover. Again, we can take the drain out. That's probably all junky. And then also these two screws. Holy crap. That's disgusting. You see all the crap on there? That's what I'm saying. That idle jet's completely blocked with grime. Yikes. So that's where most of the cleaning, you know, you're going to get the most benefit. <laughs> but you definitely want to get all this junk out of here. And 
then we'll get to the actual circuits. Sometimes you just have to use the the pick to really get in here and scrape all this junk out. I mean, that's ridiculous. So much crap is in here. So blow all this out. Okay, now that we have this carburetor all naked, let's trace the circuit. It's pretty cool. You can actually visualize what's going on with each circuit. Let's start with the choke. So when you turn the choke on, you pull this plunger up. You can see that it connects several passages. Well, the one up top comes from this chamber, which is connected to right here. So that's just atmospheric air on this side. And that's going to be our air intake for the choke circuit. Now, it mixes with, you see there's a passage that's drilled into the carburetor. You can kind of trace it through there. And then it attaches to the main, the main, uh, right in there. See the third fuel intake. So right here, see how fat that is? That's the choke fuel intake. So fuel gets sucked in here, mixes with the air coming through the top, and finally gets fed in to the vacuum side of the intake through that port in there. You can see that this is the you know vacuum supply to the fuel petcock, so that it uses the same passage to draw in extra fuel and air when you that plunger comes up. That's the choke circuit. Next up, idle circuit. See that really clogged small jet? This guy right here. So that's the fuel coming in for our idle. And then there's a little hole in the bore right there. And then as you open the throttle, you can see like three or four more holes which get exposed to the vacuum as you open the throttle. Now, where did those come from? Well, one thing we can take out is this little screw, which is the pilot idle screw. And we can actually measure the number of turns before we take it out. So let's try that. Half, one, one and a half, almost two turns. And you want to remove this idle screw because it gives you a nice access to that really tiny idle passage which is prone to clogging. So be careful, it's a very delicate sharp needle and also a little spring. So keep those together. And a washer. <laughs> Don't lose anything. Keep it all in the needle. Like so. Okay. So you can see that passage goes all the way in right to that hole and the small holes behind it. Where does the idle circuit, so we have fuel, where does the air come from? For the idle circuit. See these three holes right there? <clears throat> Those are each for the separate circuits. So the one for the idle is, I think, okay, so the, the leftmost one it goes to this little chamber here. That's for like the D cell uh, compensation. I think that's all that is. And then these two. One is the idle air uh, jet and the other one is the fuel air jet. And you can see the one that's centered right along with the needle. That's the main air jet. So process of elimination, that has to be for the idle. Well first let's take the idle jet out. It's all crusty and gummed up. There we go.
Yeah. So looking into that passage, we see that indeed um, the air comes from this little guy. So if we put WD-40 in here, so WD-40 is great for checking circuits. So I was wrong. The middle hole, if you spray that, you can see liquid coming out right where we took the idle jet out. Perfect. So that says that passage is free. We can lightly blow it out. And also, you shoot idle into where the pilot screw was right here. And you should see fluid coming out of the three holes and the idle passage in the front. So perfect. And again, from here, it comes out of the <clears throat> passage on the fuel. So air, fuel, and outlet, and where your needle is. Perfect. So the idle circuit's almost done. All we need to do is take care of this gummed up stuff. And you can see right here is where the air and the fuel mix before getting sucked into the bore. This is like the aerating piece. So first let's do a little cleanup of the surface. And this jet is going to need some serious fine pick action to get all that junk out of there. It is insane. So we can use a little hook and just start digging the crap out. You can always Try to blast it through this way. You can already see the hole is opening up. Whoops. There goes my straw. But when you're done, you want to look in there and actually see light all the way through. The idle jet is the smallest of the jets, so that's the one where it's really critical. Even if it's partially blocked, your idle will not be correct. You'll backfire and stall. So this is the most critical to clean. looking better. So I'm going to finish that up and then we'll do the main circuit. So the issue with this idle jet is that it goes way deep and the, the actual jet is like way up here. So all this stuff is filled with deposits. Alright so it's almost there but the hole, the little jet hole is still clogged and I found that using some copper wire strands is a good way to really get th all the way through the jet. I mean these holes are tiny, you're not going to put a pick through here and you don't want to shove anything in too hard because it will enlarge in the hole and mess up your mixture. So basically, see that copper strand <clears throat> come in from, from this side and then just try to work it in. Okay there it goes, it went right through the gum deposits and just just keep going at it until we're completely in the clear. You want to see light through it? Excellent. 
excellent. Finally, you won't be able to see on camera, but we're finally getting there. And you can even double up the strands. So take two strands of the same length. You can twist them together and see if those will fit through a tiny little passage. And then just twist. Sometimes only one strand will fit. So this is the most time consuming part is the cleaning the, the really tiny passages in these jets. So one, only one strand fits through that hole so we can I'm sure they make special tools for this kind of thing like fine tip and different gauges but this works perfectly fine you can get your jets cleaned out to where they'll work as good as new and that's the name of the game here get it working as good as new perfect you can see a nice round hole and just see brass no more deposits and then from this side you can see all the way through the hole. Again, it's way, way down in there. But I like it. So this idle jet to me is done. Clean. Good to go. Now we just need to take care of the main circuit. Alright, moving on to the main jet. This sucker was tight, but it broke free. It looks most disgusting of them all wow so everything's clogged up these little air mixing holes and then you can take the jet out of here I believe but let's first at least clean it on the, on the bench a little bit I think this is all due to a leaky fuel pack that was letting gas by when the motorcycle was just sitting so it kept filling the bowls it was evaporating leaving all this garbage behind is usually you shut the fuel off, the fuel evaporates from the carburetor bowls, and then you're good. <laughs> you don't need any like fuel stabilizer, any of that fancy stuff. If everything works well, this should not happen if you just leave your bike over winter. It should be good to go in the spring. I've never had a motorcycle that gummed up over winter. If you leave it for like two or three years, then yeah, you're gonna have problems. Hey, we can actually see the jet now. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I believe we clamped this in a vise, we can take the main jet out of this piece. But I'm not exactly sure because we still can't see if it's one piece or two piece. Usually it's separate because you can see you can put a screwdriver in here and you can hold this with a wrench Ugh. Smells good. Yeah, we should be able to separate that. Let me put this in a vise. So lightly clamp the jet assembly in a vise and get the fattest screwdriver you can get into this groove because it's going to be a little tough. And spray it for good luck. Let's see. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it was scared. It wasn't going to put up a fight. So this is the actual main jet, the orifice part. You can see it's completely blocked. And then we have our mixing. If you want to call it a I don't know, mixer, but it's a jet holder. 
So let's get everything cleaned up here and we're pretty getting pretty close. So for these bigger passageways, you can use a little screwdriver to get all the junk out of there. Because you know, carb clean will not <laughs> get this many solid deposits off. You would have to soak it for like a month. So my strategy is WD-40 and a little bit of careful manual cleaning. Okay. Now you can blow in here and block this passageway. That should clean out all the side holes. They're very important for mixing the fuel in the air before it gets injected into the, the actual throttle. So all the holes look good. This piece looks, well, there's still a lot of crap in there. So we might do a little more manual cleaning. Oh yeah, look at all that green stuff. The green crusties in the fuel. <laughs> So keep blowing it out until there's until you can see brass. It's getting there. So I'm gonna finish that up. Finally the little main jet, well, the only main jet, we're just digging out this crud. So again, if you like take your car to a motorcycle dealer and they put in an ultrasonic cleaner, you will not get good results because it would take ages to actually get through this stuff. It's really, it's like chunks of it coming out. And then from this side, same story. I don't know if you can blame this on ethanol. I do. These older bikes sometimes don't even run right with the ethanol gas just because the mixture gets like too lean and you start having issues. That actually burned up the piston before. On my little Honda S90, I had to rejet from an 85 to like a 100 size jet just to get the mixture right because in 1965 they didn't have ethanol, <laughs> so the bikes weren't built for it. So yeah, this is all just kind of a Zen process. Take your time, get all the green crusties out eventually you'll have a nice clean jet that if taken care of should not need cleaning ever again you know this is like a restoration this isn't a yearly annual thing you don't you don't need to worry about it and I've never used stable or any of those gasoline whatever stabilizers you know, if you run through a tank at least once a year, it should be fine. Alright, so that's the main jet and the holder. Now, the last thing we have to do is check the passages in the carburetor body for the main circuit. Just blow them out and should be pretty much ready for reassembly. Alright, so all the jets are out and clean. Let's just verify all the passages. So idle we already did. Let's try the choke. So with the plunger up, sure enough we get squirtage into the bore and out of our little passageway right here. And the last thing you want to do is check the actual fuel part 
which is right down here. So if we spray f into the fuel, yep, sure enough, we get flow from right there. Make sure the plunger works nice. Try again. So if we blow through this guy, where do we see it coming out? Is the choke passageway clogged? It might be. There's actually a little choke jet right in there. So, so that's why you have to check each and every passageway. You can't just say, oh, it looks clean. Nope. You're going to be taking them back off the bike and trying to figure out what's wrong. It's better to do it all correctly while it's on the bench, not skip any steps. Okay, so you can see, again, do the WD-40 check, squirt in the fuel, and then with our compressed air, with the, with the plunger up, you see it's coming out of here, which is good. All right, that was a choke circuit. Last but not least, the main, the main jet. So here's the fuel, and it's coming out right out of where the needle sits. That's good. And which one mixes with the air? We already checked. I think it was this one. So all the passages are good, just have to put it back together. Alright, final reassembly time. I popped in the anti-backfire valve. Now the main jet. Screw that right in. It feels really good to uh, put together a well cleaned carburetor. Not gonna lie, <laughs> everything's beautiful. So that was the main and the idle jets. Perfect. Give it just one more quick blow for good luck. All right. So this gasket, again, I didn't get a rebuild kit, but it's still pliable and as long as it sticks out past the edge of the bowl, I, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Just hope for the best. Again, I'm sure people in the comments are like, oh, I can't believe you didn't put a new gasket on it, this and that. 
Well, again, if it leaks, you can put some, whatever, RTV on it. It's not going to hurt anything. But ordering a rebuild kit with all these parts just for one silly gasket is kind of also excessive. Okay, now our idle screw. And this guy, you want to bottom out and then set to whatever it was set to before. And later you can check the settings in the owner's manual. So it's zero, half, one, half, two screws out. Perfect. Last but not least, our float from the top. You want to make sure that needle finds its home. Don't force anything. Okay. Beautiful. Four screws on here. You can be confident that this motorcycle is going to start and run and Last thing you want to do once it's running is just adjust the idle screw in the mixture. But I don't see any reason that it shouldn't run. It definitely wouldn't have run if you just tried starting it with <laughs> the way it was. You can spray all the carb cleaner out it you want. It's not going to work. Alright, well. There's one clean carburetor and I just got to do the second one. So I think we'll uh, cut the video there and once they're on the bike we'll fire it up and see how it runs. Hope you enjoyed that. A little out of the ordinary. We got some WD-40 on the camera screen. Means we're working hard, right? But Zen and the art of carburetor cleaning. Sometimes it's just nice to sit back and do something like this instead of dealing with I don't know, Subaru power windows, for example. <laughs> All right, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. All right, a little bonus footage. I do want to use some gray RTV on these gasket surfaces. So put it right on the carburetor body. And to be 100% sure that these things seal up. Don't overdo it. You don't want any of the RT getting into the bowl. Just enough to make a seal all the way around. Okay. Pop that guy on here. And also the same for the big gasket that goes around where the float is in the gasoline chamber. And we'll let these things obviously dry for a day before filling them with gas. Use your finger to make sure the layer is nice and even and you don't miss any spots. All the way around there. Looks beautiful. Now we 
line it up. And the tricky part is to line up the um, throttle linkage because that needs to go in as you let the carburetor down. There we go. Nice and easy in there. Ah. Putting these screws from the bottom. Gotcha. Definitely no parts required here, just manual labor. And make sure we can get our choke linkage back on with no issues. We can. That's going to pivot right there. All right, so leave that for now and just attach a little uh, actual throttle linkage here. There's a gasket or a plastic washer. And grab this thing with some tweezers. Put that guy in. Awesome. Okay. So now we just have to do the other side. Love it. Job done. So I'm doing the second carburetor just to show you guys this is this one's even worse. That main jet you can't even recognize it anymore. It's like a pile of junk. Wow. That's just from sitting. All right, she's getting there. So I installed inline fuel filters on each fuel line. The Petcock has two fuel lines coming out, one to each carb. Have some gas in the tank. So we're going to try going to prime and see if these carbs fill up and don't overflow. There we go. Fuel is flowing. both carburetors and watch for drips okay flow has stopped back to reserve since we're pretty low on fuel <laughs> all right so far so good I just need to install the battery and fire this bad boy up all right batteries installed on. We got lights. Let's see if the starter works. Okay. Give it some choke. Let's see if it fires up. Nice.
choke is off. That's pretty sweet. You can turn the idle up a hair. Make sure nothing's touching the sauce pipes. Make it perfect. Take for a spin. One thing we definitely want to check before piping the seat on is charging system voltage, 12.4. Oh man, that's sweet. 12.2, rev it up. That's normal. Motorcycles at idle don't charge, <laughs> but right off idle, 14.2. Beautiful.